Welcome to Ultimate General Civil War on Legendary Difficulty. This is the Battle of Gettysburg. And yeah, you can see all of my career points. And we're going to put General Something Compass, then Albert uh, Johnson, Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, James Longstreet. Yeah, none of these guys are perked for speed. In the beginning, I'm going to swap someone out later who is perked for speed. So I have 12 three-star infantry. Uh, they're not going to come in on day one. Instead, I want my two-star infantry to come in on day one um, and grind a whole bunch of XP. So I have a couple goals for this battle. And what I'll tell you is that uh, I, I would never do this again. It's too frustrating to keep the battle going all four days. And I do manage to keep the battle going all four days. I'm also showing you that all my division commanders are now three-star and two-star. And, yeah, th this is the uh, division that's going to come in first. And uh, all two-star units. I have the first couple named H1, 2, and 3. They have Harper's Ferries. Uh, those are the ones I want to get closer to three-stars. So... Yeah, this is all about day one, is about getting these two-star units closer to three-star. Day two, please come back and see day two. You'll see what three-star infantry does to the Union Army, and it is just, it is just crushing. Um, the three-star infantry on day two just steamrolls over top of the enemy and just wipes them out. It looks like Colonel Difficulty, um, and this is legendary, of course, but it's just absolutely... Yeah, three-star infantry is something awesome. My goal here is, uh, and, well, I'm showing you right now all the weapons that we have, and, you know, I've built some three-star cav and plenty of three-star artillery and so on. Um... Okay, my goals are, I want to get 10 to 1 in this battle. I want to go to all the way to day 4 and get those sweet cav weapons. Um, I want to get, uh, the enemy should, I should be able to get close to 100,000 kills. That's kills and captures. I want to get most of them as kills. Um, and I want, I want my artillery to grind firearms. I don't care really, I mean, I'd like for them to get kills, but I'd like for my 10-pound parrots especially to grind firearms. Even though they're three-star units, I would like for them to get a little more XP. So I'm bringing in cash so that my artillery will have plenty of ammo and I can just fire them for hours. So actually the enemy is going to come in with 111,000. I'm going to have 125,000. It's a pretty easy battle. I do get... Uh, over 95,000. He doesn't have enough for me to kill 100,000. Um, and what I decide, I really, really struggle in, in every phase with the enemy not giving me a victory. If, if I had this to do again, I would just, I mean, I had to replay day one, the end of it several times, because the AI just kept wanting to surrender. It's really frustrating. And I, I had to fight every phase, almost every phase, several times to get... Um, the AI to not give up. So if I had this to do again, um, I, would, I would just take the victory at whatever phase the enemy wanted to quit and call it good, because it's just too hard to keep the AI on the battlefield. Um, that's the only thing I minded about this battle. I made a bunch of mistakes. Um, but let me talk about what you're seeing here. The AI can come in with, I guess, perks for his artillery where you can't see him if you just have infantry. So I had to bring in a sniper to see his artillery at all. I brought in a 20-pound parrot. Uh, please watch Hi Bob. He has, Hi Bob had a bunch of great techniques for taking out all the enemy artillery on day one, which is really, really handy if you can get it to work. I wasn't able to get it to work. I actually tried three or four times to take out his first cav unit and just guy spawned in with his infantry right on top of me and I had I have two or three I, I have three 750 man three star um, cav two with Lamots and my Lamots couldn't take the enemy out in time so um, yeah 
so what I what I went with is I'm not going to fiddle with it. I'm just going to fight what I see in front of me and not worry with it. So anyway, see Hi Bob, uh, War Bob, for some really great ideas that you might want to try in your game. So yeah, you can see where my artillery is. Union reinforcements come in. I'm just trying to take his artillery out. It's all working fine. So, here are some suggestions that I'd recommend for your game. Um, first of all, uh, if you have, like I do in this battle, enemy targeting your artillery automatically, I recommend turning that off. The enemy has hundreds and hundreds of artillery, 20-pound uh, parrot and 10-pound parrot and he will just vaporize your artillery. So I highly recommend you turn that feature off. That's the automatic, with the UI mod, the enemy automatically targets your artillery. After Gettysburg, I'm going to turn that feature off. In my game, I have it on here. The other thing I did was I targeted my artillery, or I, I chose the perks for my artillery uh, for this battle, um, greater accuracy in firearms. For Gettysburg, you definitely want all the perks that give you cover and concealment because his artillery, he's got a ton of it. So the only hope you have is to stay out of sight, and if you do get hit, to have as much cover as possible. So, yeah, I would definitely, I'm not refighting this battle, but for your battle, have all of your artillery perked with the cover and concealment perks. Definitely. Um... Snipers. I chose for my third sniper perk the greater range. For the sighted snipers, that's probably fine. But I recommend start to build some uh, un or sighted for scoped for your scoped sn snipers. That's fine. But the uh, the non scoped Whitworths. I recommend uh, cover and concealment and spotting. Like the second perk on my sniper right there, that guy has, I think for the second perk, it's cover and spotting. Okay, that's good. The But I think for the third perk, instead of the greater range, more spotting. And the reason is being able to see the enemy is so crucial in Gettysburg, particularly if you're going all four days. Um, I think I'm, I'm starting to, to change how I, I, I think about the unscoped Whitworths. I see them as uh, spotters for the infantry. Like so many of his units, like his, um, his snipers are invisible to me. Like they can get right up into my... Uh, right up next to my units, or be firing into my units and I can't see them. So I'm going to start using the unscoped Whitworths more aggressively as spotters and as support for my infantry, close support with my infantry. Maybe one, I'm thinking maybe even one every division. So... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, that he's going to charge down and engage my guys. That's exactly what I want. I want my two-star units to get into fights, to fire, to get into melee, to mix it up. They're going to take a lot of losses on day one, but that's fine. I really want them to get, and they are going to take a lot of losses, really want them to get uh, experience, and this is how they get experience. They fight, and this is perfect. If I can get like two of my units on each one of his and my snipers in there too, it's golden. So... Yeah, we want more of this. Okay, the, the other thing I recommend is what, what you'll see is I think I've played about a thousand games of Gettysburg going all the way back to Avalon Hill board games. Um, and you always attack, if you look at the map right now, on the left side. And even... Sid Meier's Gettysburg, you would be attacking over on the left. Well, Hi Bob, and I think Pandacrout did this too. I, th I think it's better, and I had originally planned to take my reinforcements, shift them over to my right, and take Gettysburg. Now, I thought the AI, 
because uh, I've never actually played this as the Confederacy before in Ultimate General. This is my first and probably last time. What, what I see is the enemy is going to go, of course, to the ridge line due north of where we are now. We're going to take the southern part of this. He's going to have the northern part. But there, there comes a part where it says he's going to start moving south. He's going to move south and defend Cemetery Hill, just like happened historically. So, yeah, it, of course, that's what they did historically. So if you occupy Gettysburg, like High Bob did, you cut him off, and then you surround him and kill him. And it's, I want to surround him and kill him. So I do two things wrong. One, I bring my reinforcements in. The attack is going well on the left. And I stay over there. That's a mistake. I take more casualties because it's in the open. If I'd been in Gettysburg, I'd have taken fewer casualties um, because you have much better cover. So that was a mistake. The other thing is I push the attack too soon. I wait for your reinforcements to come in and you can surround him and then push the attack on both the left, right, and center. But have your guys get into Gettysburg and cut his army in two. Now, I have it as a goal in every phase to let some of his units survive because you really need to get to the fourth day some of his army to actually be on the field. Like, if you kill too many, he will automatically lose on day three, like, in 20 minutes. So I want to have a few units survive every phase, but I want to wipe them out both the, the army that's going to be in the north and the army that's going to come in to the south and to the right. I want to wipe them all out and get as many kills and captures for all of my two-star units as I possibly can. So, yeah, and I think the best way to do that is, again, watch uh, Hi Bob War Bob's video and see how he moves into Gettysburg He cuts the enemy off, uh, cuts the enemy army in half, and then defeats each in detail. It is possible. Uh, I take the... Um, I, think I, I think I actually take all of the victory locations. It, the game is really squirrely. Getting the... Um, the game to the Union Army to not surrender was really hard. One time I had a unit on Cemetery Hill, one Union unit on Cemetery Hill, it's like 900 guys, and I had him surrounded, but my units were back, not within firing range. And I destroy all of his units on the map's edge, as you do. And then it's like two minutes left in the battle, and I look up on Cemetery Hill to see that guy is still alive and somehow he had charged a considerable distance into my army and surrendered. Like he just had to impale himself on the bayonets of my infantry. And I didn't do anything. I just like was focused on something else and he got himself captured and had to replay it because I got a victory and the battle's over. So... Yeah, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. This part is the enemy's charging in and I'm shooting him. And yeah, this is great stuff. But I'm starting to take some casualties in my units. I am actually paying attention to the cover that I have, but I don't have enough cover. And there's no cover over here. So even though I'm inflicting huge losses on him, as you can see, I'm also taking losses, and I take way too many losses in this battle. Um, in fact, I'm kind of shocked how many losses I take. Even though I said I'm going to kill 100,000 and get 10 to 1, I didn't have to take that many losses. I could have killed 100,000 and lost, taken three or 4,000 fewer casualties. So... Yeah, after medicine, um, I was pretty much, I think I'm at, it, I mean, it's under 10,000 casualties, but it's, that's still a lot. That's still painful. You, you could easily do this battle 
uh, particularly, yeah, and I take most of my losses here, not on, you know, my units on day two just don't, even the rest of the battle don't take very many casualties, I don't think. It's here at this phase. So I think you could reduce your losses three or 4,000 just by being in Gettysburg and not in this open field right here. So although I'm having a really good time while this is going on, just kind of crushing his flank, I mean, it's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, there's a better way to do this. Yeah, we have the blue bar. I think I outnumber him by a little bit right at this point. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I could just go ahead and wipe these guys out with the force I have right now. I mean, look at this. And I'm thinking, no, we want to surround and capture these guys. I'll wait for the rest of my army. But my point is I should have waited even more. So now I'm concerned. The map opened up and he looks like he's moving south. This is where it occurred to me, oh man, I needed to be over there and cut him off. I needed to be over there taking Gettysburg and I have like one unit on my flank. I mean, there's, there's not much over there. So all of these other infantry units needed not to be on the left. They needed to be over here, drive forward, take Gettysburg. So that's what I recommend. So these two infantry units will wander off to the north, and my army should have wandered in behind him and seized the town. Easy victory. Yeah, but now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, my army's here, and we did wipe out everything around that victory location, which I got like completely fixated on for some reason. I don't know. Um, now that I have it, I'm thinking, oh, I should have stuck with the original plan. This is, this is not good. And the other downside of what I'm doing is that ridge is all really good cover. If I approach that, I'm going to be in the open and he's going to be in cover. So you don't want to approach that until the rest of your army comes in, so he's taking fire from the rear. So, yeah, this is... Yeah, this is just not a good position. Yeah, I'm thinking these two infantry units to the that are moving through Gettysburg right now. I want to just let them move out of the town. Yeah, I really don't want to fight my way through Gettysburg. And now I see his units moving to the south, and that is not a good sign. Yeah, one of the other things I did um, that probably is not a good idea, you know, I wouldn't do it a second time, is um, I brought two batteries of 24-pound howitzers, and you'll see on day three, yeah, day three, those units do really well. I mean, 24-pound howitzers are, even at long range, just make units route. They're just so good at what they do. So what I, th but for this battle, I don't think, I don't think they're that good. Um, I think what you want here is snipers, artillery, infantry, my cav. Um, I have one cav I misuse and it just takes losses for no purpose. And then I bring in two other cav, two more cav units and they do, I think nothing. So. I would say that there's no reason to bring Cav at all. Maybe one. 
and just have it sit in the back and if a unit like does that thing where it goes through your lines or a cav unit gets to the rear of your army it can run that unit down and kill it like just happened just now kind of off camera you didn't see it but there was a cav unit behind my line it went around my flank and my Lamotts just ran it down and killed it so um kind of happened off camera uh, i would hit pause and just tell my cav unit to scoot along the bottom edge of the map and Eventually he ran into him and killed him. So, yeah, that, so one in your entire army is all you need. The, what you need here is um, infantry, pretty much. Yeah, my timing is all off here. I, I have my two 20 pound parrots are targeting his guns. They can reach, he has two batteries, and we're hitting him. But I'm pushing with my infantry, and my infantry in the north is a long way from getting here. So there's no reason to push right now. Where I need to be pushing is off to the right, and my reinforcements are coming in, and they're just now getting to my main position. If he starts moving south, I'm going to have a very tough time cutting him off. So yeah, my my yeah, I I had the two the the core commander here for both cores has the experience perk because that's the whole point is to get these two star units experience. But really, I think you want the speed perk for second core. Second core has a really long way to go, and yeah, it, anything that helps them get there faster is better. So right now, my first core is in position, or all the guys in the south are in position, but they can't really do anything until, you know, the the other units coming in from the north can get into position, and they have to make it pretty much to Gettysburg. Uh, I now have units here who can push on Gettysburg from this side, from the south, but we want to get an encirclement of these guys and fortunately, we're going to be able to pull that off. But yeah, speed park, probably for, probably for both cores. Um, probably speed perk. Yeah, and see what I'm doing right here? This is, this is not a good idea. Like, I'm pushing too close to his artillery. And I need those guys to the north to be closer so that everybody's hitting him at the same time. I guess what you could do, there are four units that come in on the, the far right. Um, maybe rifle cav. Dismounted rifle cav is really good. Uh, people underestimate how good they are. Um, yeah, there's my melee cab doing nothing of any value. I was going to try to scoot him around behind the enemy. Um, didn't work. Got hit. So, and that's pretty much it for him. He doesn't do anything, I don't think, the rest of the battle that's terribly interesting. His one moment to shine. So... Okay, finally, um, we have an encirclement of these guys. Um, now it's a question of bagging them. And, yeah, I'm pushing my artillery up because all of his artillery in the pocket is dead. So I'm going to push them up um, in exploding shell and canister range to get him to rout. His units in the woods will be... Um, Resistant to routing. I have my infantry that is 
squaring up with him on the left side is too, it shouldn't be doing that. We should be hitting these guys from the flank, and those three units that are squaring up with the enemy should not be there. Um, they're just taking losses, and they're going to take a thousand uh, useless losses because the attacks taking place to the rear and both flanks of that line are working splendidly. So, yeah, down here in the south, this is going fine. We're going to take some losses right where I have my cab. Oh, I, I did bring my cab up. He actually got a fire to volley. I think that's it for him. Um, yeah, we fire. Yeah, he still has two commanders. So, yeah, he's flashing. There's a surrender. Yeah, this is a little tricky. I'm thinking, yeah, he's going to have somebody pop through. And I tell my Cav to run over here just in case someone pops through. It's really not that big a deal. If someone pops through, my Cav can run him down. So, yeah, and over here, you know, we're just getting guys in position. I'm thinking that I have time to walk guys from this encirclement over to help the other encirclement, but I'm not going to need it. Um, those, the guys who are there can handle it just fine. Yeah, he's actually in melee with my artillery there for a little bit. Yeah, there's my cav coming up. So, yeah, I forgot it that he did that. So, yeah, he actually did do something. Over here, my units are taking way too many losses. Um, so I think I have my right flank here fall back until I can get some get my guys in place. I'm, I'm not exactly in position where I want to be. So, but yeah, we captured all those guys, and I'm having them route off the field, moving my artillery over to this uh, next battle so they can grind firearms yeah melee cav got him so yeah that was good so one melee cav is probably all you need for the entire battle yeah these guys are not exactly in the right position right now and and as i'm looking at this i'm thinking okay how am i gonna do this and not win the battle because if you take that flag i think battle's over i'm not sure i'm not sure as I'm doing this, what the victory conditions are. Um, I know if you wipe them all out, definitely the battle's over, because I had one of those. Wiped them out, yeah, the battle is a victory and you're done. As I think about this, it, it's really a frustrating struggle to keep from killing the enemy in every one of these phases. It is just absolutely an exercise in frustration. And like I said, I wouldn't do it again. I would just come in here day one, wipe them out with my best units, wouldn't even worry with it. Uh, my three-star units would turn this into a very easy battle. As you will see in day two of Gettysburg, uh, my three-star units really make this easy. So that's probably what I would do. Just wipe these guys out, call it a day, because it's just too frustrating to, you know, keep, keep okay, the flag is turning color, does that mean I'm going to lose the battle? I don't know. Um, so I'm having people back off, maybe he'll send somebody up to re retake the flag. Now my army's kind of in position, he's flashing white, and the question is, how do I end this? I think I need to be within 20 minutes before I start capturing everybody. So any time, like two minutes pass, I should be in good shape. So 21... Oh no, but I already took the... F no, he has the flag. Okay, he took the flag back. So yeah, that's what I'm looking at. This, this is possible. 
So he took the flag back. It's 18 minutes. I should be okay as long as I don't wipe him out. So those three units to the north, I want to push them to the north and then not kill them. That's the whole thing. Don't kill them. The other thing is you want as many of these units to survive as you possibly can. Um, the reason you want them to survive is so that he has a bunch of units on day four. Tiny, preferably tiny. Okay, now it's time to try to wrap these guys up, get as many captures as possible. I think he gives me all 61s, which is very good. I have one unit with 61s, a couple of CS Richmonds, and then a bunch of Harper's Ferries. So I think I get 11,061s out of this battle. So yeah, don't wipe them out, don't wipe them out, don't wipe them out, do not wipe them out. Yeah, the flag is not changing color. Do not change, like notice how I have people away from the flag. Like I had them walk away, back up. Um, yeah, do not, do not kill these three units. Do because one volley and they could all three of them surrender at once. And I was like, no, oh, this is changing color, but we have 26 minutes now. So I'm having guys run away. Please do not give me a victory. Please do not give me a victory proceeding to the next day. So yeah, we have to uh, reorganize the army. And um, yeah, please hang around. The second day is a much better um, day for the Confederate Army than today was. Today was a bloody affair, but tomorrow is just absolutely crushing, and uh, please come back. It's worth watching. I'll see you there.